Hello, everybody. I hope you've all had a wonderful work week and, by the way, a wonderful work year. So as the song says, 525,600 minutes. How do you measure? How do you measure a year? It's been one heck of a year for us in marketing, and I, for one, well, I'm not going to miss it one little bit. I am distinctly happy to put 2023 in the rearview mirror. I mean, it started so disruptive and so tough for many of our colleagues, especially in the tech sector, who suddenly found themselves, well, without work. And I place most of it right at the feet of the quote-unquote best practices of some numbskull billionaire who decided to play around with his tech company, break it down, and break it down until it, well, it broke. But it's not that it this year didn't have its moments, right? I mean, there were some amazing new startups and innovations created in the explosive idea that is generative AI. And of course, maybe, maybe the most interesting thing that happened all year was the non-appearance of the predicted recession that, you know, never happened. Or maybe the biggest thing, like the biggest trend was all the hand-wringing in our businesses about what to start in marketing, what to innovate, and what to change. All those other trends duly noted as sort of the source of all of that. But if you are in the business of marketing change in 2023, a technology company or an agency or a consultancy or just in the business of you know process change, well, you spent the large part of the year like Rudy on the sidelines hoping the coach was going to call your name, and they just didn't. Let's break down the year. And let's break down the year that was and the marketing news that was and look at our crystal ball for what we might see next year. It's been 525,595 minutes of 2023. Well, this is five minutes, eh, maybe a little more. I mean, we're breaking down a whole year here of what you need to lead in marketing. Well, let's go ahead and roll one more time. Hello, everybody. Robert Rose here with the content and marketing news. It is what's new, but as you've known all year, well, it is most importantly what's important in our world of marketing. And for the best and best practices, I hope at some point during the last 12 months, you've gotten over to contentmarketinginstitute.com. So what a year it's been in marketing. Exactly one year ago, almost to the day, I covered this brand new development called ChatGPT. Demand was so high that week that OpenAI had actually shut off access for requests uh, to the application. Now, we talked about how the operative word right then was yet. What did we need to worry about now and not worry about yet? And how we should all be exploring how it would expand our capabilities, how it would fit into our marketing process rather than how it would replace us full stop. My prediction at the time was that generative AI would extend our capabilities as writers, as content creators, as marketers, just as it closed doors on the needs to do some particular tasks. And exactly one year later, I think we're still all trying to figure that out. Which are the tasks, which are the doors that need to remain open, that are open wider, or that need to be closed? And then, well, our first broadcast of 2023 it was in January, and we covered the well let's call it precipitous decline of Web 3 in the metaverse. I covered that by looking at the evolution of Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and where Web 3 kind of stalled. The end of 2022, I noticed that we were one year into Facebook's change to their name of Meta and how NFTs in the metaverse that had once attracted eye-popping valuations and headlines had really disappeared. What we talked about was the dropping of the buzzwords, even as some experimentations continued. So, for example, I mentioned Starbucks Odyssey program, where the company was creating an NFT, but not calling it really NFTs, a based loyalty program. And, well, here we are at the end of 2023, and the Starbucks effort in Odyssey seems to be doing just fine, seems to be doing great. All of this now, at the end of 2023, in the context of us coming out of what seems to have been called the crypto winter. Seems Web3, crypto, it seems to be doing okay at the end of this year. All of it, of course, covered by the hype that is AI. Now, as we get closer to the end of winter and the early spring of this year, well, we covered the fact that AI was continuing to rumble, that big, wonderful headline-making thing, but it was actually making bigger headlines in search engine marketing. Microsoft and Google both announced AI chatbots this year that would power their internet search. So we took our eyes off of content creation for a moment and wondered about the future of SEO and search marketing. We covered the fact that Google's announcement of its chatbot, well, it made a big error during a demo. 
We talked about how trust was going to be a huge issue with generative AI. How many errors would it make? We were introduced to the idea of hallucinations and that AI would, you know, just make stuff up. My take at that time, well, I talked about the idea that searching the internet and generative AI search, well, it was two very different use cases, and that we as marketers were going to need to start exploring both to develop as, you know, Liam Neeson might call a particular set of skills. Yeah, that's right. That's my Liam Neeson impression. Anyway, as we record this, uh, Google just launched its Gemini platform for AI and, well, seems to have failed the trust test yet again with its demo being called fake news. Well, then we got into spring. Spring sprang, and we talked about podcasting in April, and it was because YouTube got into the podcasting business. They announced the ability for to create podcast feeds in YouTube and label them as such so that people could watch or listen to them. And they offered creators new measurement capabilities as well. So as we sit here at the end of 2023, while YouTube podcasts may not have shaken up the world of content creators, what we have seen is that YouTube, generally speaking, has become the biggest source of podcast listeners. As of the summer of 2023, YouTube is still the most used podcasting platform. As we got into June and July and the real heart of summer, well, we covered the pushback on purpose-driven marketing. This was an especially contentious year for marketing programs that wanted to focus on social issues and really exemplified by the trouble that Bud Light had during its Pride Month effort to use Dylan Mulvaney on Instagram to promote its product. Now, this story would pervade marketing news for months as the story that just would not go away. First, the company tried to backtrack and apologize for offending anyone, everyone, all the people. And then the company threw the marketing team under the bus. And then, of course, declining sales of the brand immediately placed those missteps at the foot of marketing. All of this was summed up toward the end of the year with so many articles on the rise and perhaps too many risks of purpose-driven marketing. I think this is a mistake. I believe brands are going to double down in 2024 and get even more involved with brand and cultural issues. Brand and purpose-driven brand especially will be an incredibly important factor of our marketing next year. Then finally, as summer started to wane and we got into the dog days of July, well, we continued to watch the slow implosion, the sort of slow-moving train wreck of X, formerly known as Twitter which itself was newsletter uh, newsworthy because now we seem to be calling it X, formerly known as Twitter, as the official name of the company now. And we also saw the history-making adoption, or rather the history-making meh, of a new platform called Threads. That's right, Meta launched Threads in July, and it became the fastest platform to reach 100 million users since, well, ever, and excitement grew that it might be the new Twitter. But that went away just as quickly as many people, weary and wary of investing a bunch of time in a new social platform, just kind of gave up on social media full stop. As we end 2023, well, X, formerly known as Twitter, and we seem that it can't get any lower or any less useful. The platform does continue to survive, even as advertisers flee, users flee, we all flee, um, who stopped using the app. Basically, the churn, or people who stopped using the app this year, has increased by 30%. Company's revenue, according to Elon himself, is down some 50%. Just as all of that is happening, X, formerly known as Twitter, it, well, it continues to be the smallest company making the biggest headlines. I mean, as we finish 2023, X, formerly known as Twitter, it ranks 12th in the popularity of worldwide social networks. You'd never know that by watching the headlines. I mean, it's less than Snapchat, less than Telegram, and just slightly over Pinterest in terms of popularity. Now, of course, as we get ready for 2024, and yeah, let's all put our heads together here. I mean, let's put our collective hearts and heads together for a much more productive year. Predictions, they're kind of useless, but they're always fun. But I'll put it this way. Here's what I believe should happen next year. My hot take, if you will. I think we're going to start to see some clarity on which doors open in a, uh, AI in the coming year. Marketing teams are going to start to understand truly, foundationally, that AI is a content strategy challenge, a marketing challenge, a process challenge, not a technology challenge. I think we may start to see some renewed action on Web3 and blockchain, maybe even a renewal of some of the Web3 co-created community building that we saw over the last couple of years. 
I do have great belief that 2024 will be the year of brand marketing. The source of information is going to become so important next year. They're going to see continued investment in influencer and subject matter expertise as a function of brand alignment and brand positioning. That's especially true, by the way, for B2B. Leaning into brand as a trusted source is going to be a key theme next year. And I believe social media, well, it'll continue to go through the upheaval that it's going through. I think, as I've mentioned before on other platforms, it just becomes another form of media. In other words, media is there for the buying or the renting or organically distributing our content for consumption. The social media networks that will belong, really, will belong to these you know, small percentage of, of content creators and basically leaving the people to consume most of that content. In other words, they'll become form of our, our, our focus will become a form of owned media, especially, by the way, events, events and brand experiences, both digital and physical, that will become the new social media. And change, well, change is going to be sexy again. We're going to bring change back from innovation to integration to a content owned media strategy. It is the focus on brand. It is all in how we become the trusted source of interesting things in 2024. It's time to roll up our sleeves, put our marketers to work, and let them innovate and change again. And with that, well, that's it. That's 525,600 minutes of a last year. I wish you all the happiest, most joyous of holidays. As the song lyrics say, it's a season of love. We'll see you again here in the new year. And until we do, remember it's your story to tell. Remember the love and tell it well. I'll see you next year. 525,600 minutes 525,000 moments, oh dear 525,600 minutes How do you measure, measure a